837 here, Big 550 KTRS. Back from a very relaxing vacation. Brenda Talent with us, who is the, let me get your official title so I don't uh, mess it up. What is your it's official CEO. title? CEO. CEO <laughs> of the Show Me Institute. CEO of the Show Me Institute, which is a nonpartisan free market enterprise think tank. Yes. In the Central West End. Good morning, Brenda Talent. Good morning, McGraw. All right. You want to talk a little voter ID today? I do, because, of course, uh, we had this, the, the veto session override, the governor's veto of our the voter ID bill. And right. it's, it's really a pretty simplistic bill. There are over 33, over 30 states that have voter ID laws now in, in, in place. And it does seem like people get, you know, riled over a much about nothing here. This voter ID law is really uh, pretty easy. I mean, you've got the ID. If you don't have an ID, the state's going to help you get an ID. And then they've carved out exceptions for people with disabilities, people who have religious objections to having identification, and to those who were born before 1941. Right. So if you don't have an ID, you can bring something uh, to show that you live where you live. Right. And then they'll take a picture of you so they can match up the picture with the ID so that it's a... And if you don't have a uh, uh, an ID. They take a picture for you, so there's no there's no poll tax. There's there's no nothing. No, and and in fact, if you do that, if you sign an affidavit, your vote will be treated just as a vote. It won't even be a provisional vote. Right. The provisional vote provisions are only if you refuse to sign an affidavit saying you are who you are. What I don't understand about all this voter ID stuff is that the absentee ballot process seems to be a lot more places where fraud could take place. And we saw that in the city of St. Louis with this right, Rodney, right with yeah. this Hubbard and this uh, Bruce Franks thing. And yet no one talks about the absentee ballot side of things. They only talk about the voter ID side of things. Okay, I've, I get it. You don't want voter fraud. But it seems to me like there's much greater chance of voter fraud when it comes to absentee ballots than anything else. Well, at every level, there's the potential for fraud if a person wants to commit fraud. Right. So you have the absentee ballot, you have the issue of voter registration, timing of registration. Right. But on the absentee, I think one of the issues there is it's a common one when you're dealing with bureaucracies. Why don't they just enforce the laws and regulations as they exist? When you read some of the stuff that happened with the 78th um, pre ward, right. it, uh, d a district rather, um, it seemed like people were just sleeping on the job and not doing what they were supposed to do vis-a-vis the, the formalities right, that need right. to be observed. No, no, no question. There's a, I mean, there's a lot of criticism to go around, and one of it was the board in which the law says put it in, in an envelope. If it's not in an envelope, you don't count it. I mean, there's and it's it needs as simple to be as notarized. That. Right, and, right, and, and all that. I get all that. But if you're sort of looking at the world and saying, wait a minute, someone's going to send you a ballot. You're going to sign it, vote, put it in a ballot, put it in an envelope, seal it, which is your sealed whatever, and then send it in. That seems to be a lot more fraudulent possibilities sure, sure. Than, than going through the time to go to a polling place to show up and not be... John Q. Smith, the, uh, the person who's actually you are to go vote in that war. Well, I think there, uh, there's obviously a lot of potential there for fraud. But I, I, I'd make the case that there's uh, potential and, and significant potential for fraud, even in the first instance, although everyone says, no, there's not, in this sense. I mean, if you've got a sophisticated operation, you can find out who's registered. I mean, you can get the voter rolls. You can find out who's a frequent voter. And you can even find out during the process of the day with poll watchers whether people have voted or not. So it becomes pretty easy to identify people who are registered to vote but haven't shown up to vote. Right. But then, but very rarely do you ever hear of a story where somebody, like, when you fill out your taxes and they come to you and they say, oh, well, you already, somebody already claimed your rebate, right? No, I haven't heard of, of anybody going to the polls to vote and then say, oh, sorry, you already voted today. But think about how hard that is to discover, too. I mean, if the person does it, because you're, you're, if you were targeting it, you would be targeting people who normally are don't, right, who are registered really, and don't go. Really don't vote. Uh, you do know, in Arizona, 
when I was just graduated from college, I moved down to Arizona, stayed with my sister while I was trying to figure out what, what I was going to do with my life. Um, and I registered to vote. Do you know that I still get voter registration in Arizona? I still get cards telling me where to vote? They haven't purged the, in 20 years, they haven't purged the voting oh, rules? There are so many processes that are needed. Purging, making sure that people are still within the, the geographic area that they say. Because if, you know, I know of people who've said, well, I moved from the city to the county and they're right. still getting information from the city because the rules haven't been purged. Yeah, you have that, but then you have... Uh, there's also whether it's the voter re- the voter registration, which I, I I understand the argument is you know Mickey Mouse votes or Vicky Ma- Mickey Mouse gets uh, registered to vote. All of those get sort of thrown out. I'm not worried about that. But not having enough ballots in places, um, things like that. The, you know, um, too long a line to Poles go vote. Polls open. Poll too sta- long. Well, but but having too long of a line, right? I mean, yes. there, there are cases where, you know, you have to, should you really have to wait an hour and a half to go vote? Are defective ballots. Defective ballots, right. I mean, there's all sorts of shenanigans going around. Um, I'd like to see you have it, have it, have be able to vote for a week, right? Why not? Why not keep the polls open for a week? Give everybody a chance to vote. You know, why just on a on a second Tuesday or first Tuesday of November? Also, well, but McGraw, we have problems getting people who will run the polls and observe the operation of the polls for one day. <laughs> I'm not sure we can well, get them there for a week. <laughs> valid point. What about this? In the city of St. Louis, they're going to have five election days. Oh, yeah. That's Five election days. Now, tell me something. The system's broken. When you can manipulate, I want to put this on this ballot and not that ballot because less people are going to go vote in this ballot and this election, so I can sort of finagle what I want on this ballot as opposed to that ballot. Well, we see that happen also with our April elections where right. a number of very important offices are voted on, but the voter turnout is pathetic. Right. Yeah. No, it's an uh, interesting world. All right, Brenda Talent, CEO of the Show Me Institute. More online with this? Sure. Visit Show Me Institute. And then what did you bring me back from your vacation? I brought you back osembe, and that's a Japanese rice cracker. And this one is a real treat because it's wrapped with dried seaweed. That's so what I thought. I need dry seaweed this it's, morning. It's good for you. <laughs> it's dried seaweed and a cracker. You'll become addicted. It's better than potato chips. I will try it. This is straight from Japan. It's straight from Japan, made in Japan, product of Japan. Don't did, eat it on the radio, McGraw, because it's really <laughs> crunchy. Did you uh, did, did you uh, declare this through customs? Well, you're allowed to bring those in. Oh, those okay. Are, those are allowed. I didn't right. do anything illegal. I just want to make sure. All right. Brenda Town, have a good week. Thanks. <laughs> you too. 845 here, Big 550 KTRS. Having some IT problems? I got a solution for you. Huber and Associates, Team Huber, teamhuber.com. That's where you want to go for all of your IT problems.